Welcome to Sethcraft. I'm building a 20 by 30 workshop and it's time to insulate the walls. The walls that I have are two by four, which means I'm gonna be using R13 to insulate. And so I've got big tubes of M90, which is 126 square feet of insulation. There are a few things I need to do this task. I've got a razor knife here and that will be able to cut my vats into the length that I need. Got a tape measure. I've also got a stapler, and the staples that I'm using are these right here, the T50 staples, and they are 5 sixteenths or 8 millimeter. I find that you don't have to have anything too extreme or long, otherwise they may uh, stick out of the wood and you have to tap them back in with a hammer. Other than that, I've just got a flat edge that I will use to press down the insulation to make it easier to cut. And then because insulation is some pretty gnarly stuff for the eyes and lungs, I've got safety goggles and I'm going to be using this uh, bandana just to cover the uh, nose and mouth and that will help me not to breathe in this fiberglass. All right, let's go ahead and get started here on this wall. Fog. It's always an issue with these glasses. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move over here to this wall right here. And so you can see it is a blank open cavity. So what I want to do is use the tape measure real quick and just see what my space is from the top of the bottom plate to the bottom down here. I've got 45 inches. I like to give myself a little extra, so I'm gonna cut this at 46. These tubes are kind of like a mattress. Whenever you open them up, they really uh, expand. All right, so I'm gonna get this opened up and then we will let it fall out here. I'm gonna take one piece and stretch it out on the ground. Doesn't take too long for this stuff to fluff up, which is good. I'm gonna use my tape measure here, measure out 46 inches. Leave the paper side up. Just use your flat edge to press down and that makes it a lot easier to be able to cut this as you can push it down against the floor. I have found this stapler to work well. I will try to remember to link that in the description down below so you can get that. The staples I picked up from Lowe's, but I will also put a link to those if I can find them. All right, I'm gonna place this right here. The side of the insulation has these little tabs that fold out, and that's gonna be what's used to staple onto the two by fours. Push this into position. Make sure it's touching the bottom plate and also up here at the top. And then just go along and put some staples in. Now the cavity right above here, I'm gonna measure from the bottom of that plate down to here. We got 46 and a half, so if I did 47 or even 47 and a half would be fine. See what we've got here, left over. All right, we got 47 and a half right there. So luckily we can just use this same piece to stick up here on the next section. Stuff this in this cavity here. And that's how I put insulation on these basic cavities. Next, we'll move over to one that has an outlet or a light switch. I turned the fan on in case you hear that noise because it was hot. So if you notice, there is a wire coming down in this cavity right here. And I'm going to be covering that up with insulation, of course. So what I want to do is, uh, I know that this is gonna be the same, 47 inches. And so I can cut out around this outlet and the wire I think it's pushed back enough that I'm just going to press that insulation in there and let it be as it's gonna be. I'm gonna get the top of this stapled into position. Now I'm gonna take my knife and cut out where that box is and that will allow me to get this insulation around there. All right. Now my boxes are pretty deep, but a lot of times you can take that extra insulation and stuff it behind the box. I won't be able to do that here on mine, so 
just going to press this in, get all the insulation out of the way. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Then I can take my stapler and just continue down the line here. And with this wire just sticking out up here, I'm just going to be stuffing around it and uh, I think it's gonna be fine. Like I said, you could always take the time to go in there and cut a strip out behind it or around it, I should say, but it's gonna be fine here. I'm now done with all the easy full length cavities, such as these right here. Now it's time to move on to the more difficult ones, such as the top two feet that go all the way around the building, and also the smaller cavities, such as under the windows and where my two walls come together. So let's go ahead and tackle all of those. The process for this is pretty much the same as the normal size cavities, especially for these up here that are uh, 16 inch on center. So measuring here, I need 21 and a half, here I need 20. For these smaller pieces, I've been using my level, which has a long tape measure on it. And so I'm able to just use that, find where I need to cut, make my mark, and then I turn around here and just uh, cut that across, press down to keep it compacted. Seems to be working pretty good. And just like everywhere else, I just simply press the insulation into the cavity, fold out the tabs to the side, and for the most part, to be honest, it holds itself in there fine, but I'm still putting a couple of staples just to make sure it doesn't come falling out. No need to undo some work that I've already done. Now that I have all the top pieces done, I'm gonna move on to these half cavities, or whatever this is, and get these filled up. So the actual space in between here is six inches. So I want to cut this at about seven and a half to even eight inch. And then the height here needs to be about 46 inches. So let's do eight inches by 46 inches. Now, because this insulation is only about 15 inches wide, I think what I'm going to do is uh, seven and a half approximately. And that should get us uh, halfway through here. That way I can use the rest of this uh, for a different spot. Now this other side I'm not going to cut across because I may need that to be a little bit taller for the next cavity up. As you can see all of this is pretty much just very repetitive until you get all the way done with all the cavities. So I'm gonna continue getting all of these done. And then we will take a look at the final product where everything has been completed. And after over a month of work, I am finally done with the insulation of this building. Let's step back and I'll show you each room that I have finished out here. Now keep in mind, it took me about a month to do this. And so a lot of other work has been done here in the building that you will see in future videos. So make sure you're subscribed for that. All right, let's take a tour around the building to see all of the insulation that's been done so far. Let's begin with the room that I started off insulating in. So this wall over here was uh, the first one and it is completely finished, looking pretty good. The insulation up under the windows had to be customized to fit. And I also added a little bit over here in this corner where my uh, wall was connected to the exterior wall. So I've got insulation in there. You can see up top, I have all of those done. And uh, I've got these small sections over here where the two walls do come together. Now I had to modify above my window a little bit. I had to add an additional stud because my uh, I had not placed this stud right here to fit that insulation in. Now along the light switch over here, you can see there is a bit of a cavity right here, and it's fine. This is mostly for sound purposes here on the interior walls. Moving on to the next room, didn't really show you anything in here, but uh, I've insulated all of this. So I can step back real quick so you can see what this looks like. Got my exterior door right there, window over here, 
and uh, I've got this is an interior wall over here went ahead and insulated that so that it would be uh, good for sound have a small cavity over here on this side same as before I had to add another stud up top to make sure I had all the insulation above the door all right now let's move into the big room here turning this way you can see all of the insulation over on this side now there's a couple of bats over here where I added a little extra because that very last cavity is not quite 16 inch on center and so I had to fill that up a little bit with a little extra now above the door over here there was another issue where I had uh, not made my studs quite 16 inch on center for that last piece and so it has a little extra insulation behind it now over here I've already started with some paneling so ignore that and then I also have to add a little bit of insulation on my utility closet which you have not seen yet either all right that concludes the insulation portion of this workshop thank you so much for watching this video on me insulating my 20 by 30 workshop as you can see there is a lot more content on the way so make sure you're subscribed to see all of that i'm seth with the seth craft workshop and i will see you in the next video bye